chest, then you start to see that there's the beating heart. So this is just a short clip. So this is to show what happens once you've pushed everything back. You have to define mm -hmm. what actually is the muscular diaphragm. So we have to freshen up the edges, you know, sort of like sewing. <laughs> You've got a rent in your shirt, you gotta, you know, clean up the edges and then start stitching them. Uh, so this is now um, closing the hole with the stitches and um, you can see that there are a few stitches in place already and try to attack it from both sides so we're left with a hole in the middle that we can easily see and close. And that little pusher thing is just to tighten the knots from the, uh, from the stitches. So uh, at our hospital we've had 12 babies done um, by this uh, approach. It's technically feasible, we, we can certainly do it, but we don't have any long-term experience with this technique yet. Pediatric surgeons were a very conservative bunch. We don't judge it by the first 10, we judge it by the last 10, and, and, and over many, many years. So we don't have any long-term data yet. But we, like other centers who have been doing this, have noticed that in some patients, we've been seeing recurrent hernias earlier and, uh, and more. Um, in our traditional approach through a tummy incision, our recurrence rate is, is without patches, Four percent, but in our uh, diaphragmatic hernia repair by uh, by thoracoscopy, we've been doing mostly through the chest. It's been almost forty-five percent within the first two years. So we're very cautious now about this approach. And uh, I spoke to one of my colleagues, Kevin Lally, who runs the CDH registry in Houston, and, and this data um, from all of the centers that contribute to the registry shows that there's been a 19% recurrence rate within the same hospitalization. So there's a steep learning curve. There's there's definite uh, pros and cons to this technique. So, you know, um, just because it looks nicer doesn't mean it's necessarily a better operation. In, important also is that we pick the patients that are most stable, you know, the ones that can be turned, that can tolerate their tummy being uh, inflated and so forth. So they really should have the best results. So the fact that we don't really is a is a, uh, a word of caution. So I'm going to dream big now. What's what's the future of CDH repair? Well, you know, better surgical results, right? You know, I want the operation to be better tolerated by all the, the babies. I want smaller scars, um, better patches, better than surgery something that really grows into a muscle that actually works. Um, Fewer recurrences, one recurrence is not <coughs> too many. Uh, I heard that there's somebody here that actually had six repairs, you know. Um, it's, uh, that, it, that has to, that number has to come down. And it's not just a technical issue, but uh, you know, every time we patch, there's, there's that risk. Now that's, that's dreaming sort of big, but um, I got a dream in Technicolor to really, you know, put a mark in this, this field. And, Surgery is, is just a, 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 a plug in the hole. All surgery does is put the organs back where they belong and closes the hole. It does nothing to address the underlying issue that all of you are well aware of, which is that these kids have heart-lung disease. Okay? And they, pers they have a long-term heart-lung uh, problem from an underdeveloped lung and underdeveloped lung blood vessels. And so if I was to really dream big about how we can fix diaphragmatic hernias better, it won't be surgery because surgery is not going to address the underlying problem. Fix the problem before it starts is, I think, going to be something that we all would like to aim for. And that, uh, you already heard this morning, you know, that has to start with understanding the fundamental basis of this condition, the genetic basis, the, de the development of pathways that are involved that are deranged in diaphragmatic hernia disease so that we can uh, understand how we can intervene antenatally, either by preventing it or correcting it when it's still in utero without having to surgically um, uh, intervene uh, because it's, it's not the, uh, I don't think that's going to be the, the uh, panacea for diaphragmatic hernias. 
So I'm happy to take questions at this time.